it's a matchup of opposites tonight. Ryan Vogelsong is a 37-year-old veteran who has grinded his way to a successful career. Garrett Cole is a 24-year-old phenom and a former number one overall pick in the draft. It's experience versus youth in game one of the series. Vogelsong, Cole, and it's coming up next. Coming to you from the corner of third and king as we get ready for Giants baseball game one of this three game series Pirates and Giants. Hi again everybody I'm Dwayne Kuyper alongside me is Mike Kruko. Well the Giants ended up splitting that four game series against the Braves a little disappointed they won the first two games in that series and they'll start out a series tonight against a really tough Pirates team and Garrett Cole and Ryan Vogelsong really a good matchup. Well, it should be a good matchup. You got two teams that are playing great. You got two pitchers who've been very hot and have had great months of May. So, what it's going to boil down to is who makes the fewest 90 foot mistakes. The team that plays the cleanest defense, the pitchers that issue the fewest walks, that's going to be what decides this entire game and series. So, hey, strap it on. Good baseball. It's the big leagues. Yeah, it should be a low scoring series, you would think. All right, stay tuned. We will take you to our Comcast Sportsnet studios for an update, and we'll do that. Right after these messages. New black pepper cheeseburger today, only at Jack in the Box. And by Toyota, number one in MPG, durability and resale value. Toyota, let's go places. 
Giants welcoming in the Pittsburgh Pirates. Peas, not to be mistaken for Panic and Posey. Three game set begins tonight. Giants looking to get back in that win column after dropping the last two games to the Atlanta Braves. Welcome back to the broadcast. I'm Amy Gutierrez and with Pittsburgh in town, Giants fans and Giants players fondly remember the last time these two teams met. It was October 1st, 2014, the wild card game. And it is our T-Mobile game changer this evening as we take you back okay, a win or go pitches. home situation to start the postseason. Pressure? Right nope, Snyder not for Brandon Crawford. He hits a grand slam over the right Brandon field Crawford wall. It was the first grand slam hit by a shortstop in postseason history and a deafening crowd was silenced. Giants went on to win that game 8 nothing, and 11 wins later. You know where they were. They were in a parade on Market Street. All right, Ryan Vogelsong taking the hill tonight for the Giants. He's a former Pirate. He's looking to continue his winning ways. Lineups, first pitch, Kruk and Kipe all coming at you. Stay with us. New black pepper cheeseburger today, only at Jack in the Box. And by Toyota, number one in MPG, durability and resale value. Toyota, let's go places. Giants welcoming in the Pittsburgh Pirates. Peas, not to be mistaken for Panic and Posey. Three game set begins tonight. Giants looking to get back in that win column after dropping the last two games to the Atlanta Braves. Welcome back to the broadcast. I'm Amy Gutierrez and with Pittsburgh in town, Giants fans and Giants players fondly remember the last time these two teams met. It was October 1st, 2014, the wild card game. And it is our T-Mobile game changer this evening as we take you back okay, a win or go pitches. home situation to start the postseason. Pressure? Right nope, Snyder not for Brandon Crawford. He's he hits a grand slam over the 
right Brandon field Crawford wall. It was the first Lester Grand Slam hit by a shortstop in postseason history, and a deafening crowd the was silenced. Giants went on to win that game 8 nothing, and 11 wins later. You know where they were. They were in a parade on Market Street. All right, Ryan Vogelsong taking the hill tonight for the Giants. He's a former Pirate. He's looking to continue his winning ways. Lineups, first pitch, Kruk and Kipe all coming at you. Stay with us. For the ground rules. Our game time weather is presented by the Santa Cruz Beach Boardwalk. Get to the beach. The admission free boardwalk is now open every day. 61 degrees here at the yard. You see the winds at 11 miles per hour, partly cl cloudy, and a night where the humidity is 65%. Let's take a look at the lineup for the Pittsburgh Pirates. We'll be facing Ryan Vogelsong. It'll be Josh Harrison in the leadoff spot, then Polanco, and then Andrew McCutcheon, who definitely has started to heat things up, followed by Neil Walker, the second baseman. He'll hit cleanup, then Marte, Alvarez, and Kund, and then Chris Stewart will hit eighth, and Garrett Cole will pitch him bat ninth. Ryan Vogelson leading out the troops. He is on the hill tonight for the Giants. Vogelsong, 6'4", 215 pounder. He's in his ninth year at the big league level, 37 years of age. And this is what he has done, 4-2 and two with a 4-2-4 ERA. 38 strikeouts in 51 innings. And with Vogelsong, you're going to see a, a low 90s fastball, but with exceptional command to the corners with two types of movement, the two-seam and the four-seam fastball. He'll throw a lot of them. 2011 All-Star. Also throw you a curveball slider change up and the way he's been throwing now he's just really wherever Buster Posey will set that target up it's almost like he never even has to move the glove that's the kind of groove that he has been in the Giants have won the last five games that he has taken the mound now let's take a look at the defense for the Giants will employ tonight behind Vogelsong starting in their outfield from left to right will be Aoki Pagan and Pence. 
Crawford and Duffy on the left side of the infield. Panic and Bell on the right side. Buster Posey, he'll be in the squad, putting down the signs. Ryan Vogelsong, who spent parts of six seasons with the Pirates. You remember, came up with the Giants, but got traded over to Pittsburgh in the trade that brought Jason Schmidt to the Giants. Now let's take a look at the grips that he uses. That's the four seam fastball. That'll be the highest velocity fastball and the least movement. This will be the two seam fastball where you get movement but not as much velocity and that's how you throw a sinker. And then there's a cutter. <clears throat> Just the pressure on the seam with your middle finger. And it's not that far different from the curveball. Same type of grip there, and then there's the circle change. You see the circle on the side there with the forefinger and the thumb. So we are ready for Giants baseball here at AT&T Park. So here's Harrison hitting at 264, four home runs. 18 driven in. Focus on trying to get the mound just the way he likes it. And the first pitch of the ball game is on its way, and it's a call strike. 7 16. First pitch. On deck is Gregory Polanco, and that pitch just wide, called by Adrian Johnson. Around the horn, Miller, Eddings, and Wolf, first to third. Johnson, very low strike zone, and is very tight early in the game. He will loosen up as the game progresses. High to right to Pence, and that's how this game gets started on a fly ball to right. One out. Take a look at the Giants in April 9 and 13 May 21 and 9 and uh, they rank 14th in, in runs per game in April 1st in May uh, 13th in batting average with runs to score position 1st in May and ERA 396 in April 352 in the month of May explains the 21 and 9 record. So here's Polanco hitting at 256. Three home runs 14 driven in. And he takes low. The Pirates are coming off a four game series in San Diego. And, uh, and like the Giants against the Braves, they split that four game series and they lost last night by a final of seven to one. 1 0 pitch to Polanco is inside 2 0. Vogelsong thought he had a strike. Tight zone early, it'll loosen up later. You have to be patient. Two balls, no strikes. There's a fly ball to left. Aoki underneath it. And Aoki puts it away. So two fly balls and two outs. And here's how you want to face Andrew McCutcheon. McCutcheon at 275. He's got seven home runs, 30 driven in. This guy's got th the attitude going. Well, it, it, it's I'd say the attitude's pretty good. Outside to McCutcheon, who's three for 14 lifetime against Vogelsong. The 1 0. So we're going to shot on the ground off of Duffy to Crawford and McCutcheon beats it out. That'll be a base hit. McCutcheon has been hot after a horrible start here. A one hop top spin seed. And Duffy cannot come up with it. 
and with the speed of McCutcheon, really not much of a shot for Brandon Crawford to make a play. Although he tried to pick up Duffy. Here's Neil Walker. You look at Matt Duffy, and you know, that's a hot corner, right? You play a lot of balls off your chest. You might want to take a chest protector, put it underneath that chest of his. <laughs> it would definitely help him fill out that uniform. And that's not to come across that we don't think he's strong. He is a very strong young man. Well, especially from the elbows down. I mean, his his wrists and hands very strong. And it shows with the way he swings the bat. Walker Onage on Vogelsong. He's seven for sixteen with four doubles. There aren't many in this Pirates lineup that have good luck against Vogelsong, but this guy does. Seven for sixteen with four doubles. That's that's Onage. Up and in again, two and zero. Oh. See what he's trying to do. He's trying to throw that cutter in on his hands, right at the belt. So Walker count leverage here. Two balls and no strikes. McCutcheon a good lead. He does not go. And there's a strike to make it two and one. Crawford and Duffy playing Walker to pull on the left side of the diamond. Swing and a bouncing ball foul. Look out, ball dude. Whoa, Rich Brown. We almost lost the ball dude here. Let's see. All right, I got this one. I got this one. Hey. I don't know. That, that might be a bad hop. What do you think? Well, there were a few bads in there, and I think the hop was amongst. That was one of the bads. Yeah, otherwise, Rich probably would have had it in his back pocket. Two balls, two strikes to Walker. Just underway here at AT&T Park. out of play. Walker waited nicely on that breaking ball. Got a man making a play. Gamer Bay came over, high fived him. Leaving a few people hanging. It's the only way a Gamer Bay comes over is if they make a nice catch. Well, there's, there's a precedent that's been set here. Walker knew it, and that'll end the inning. After one half inning, Pirates up and Giants coming up.
Here's the Giants lineup. It'll go like this. It'll be Aoki and then Joe Panic, who's got a good hit streak going at home, followed by Pence, Posey, and Belt. Crawford in the sixth slot, then Pagan, Duffy, and Vogelsong. On the hill tonight for the Pittsburgh Pirates will be the right hander, Garrett Cole. Garrett Cole off to a great start. A lot of people think this guy might be the starter for the National League in the All Star game. He's been that good. He's a big guy. 6'4, 225 pounder. He's 7 2 with a 2 1 1 ERA. 70 strikeouts in 64 innings. And when you're taking your bats against Cole, I mean, you better get in there and get ready to hit because you're going to see some quality stuff. You're going to see a fastball that'll go mid to high 90s. He'll sink, he'll cut the ball. He's got a curveball. Slider change up for that he can strike out with all every one of the pitches that he has. And he's facing a guy that's got a couple of hits off him lifetime. And the first pitch is a call strike. And it's 0 and 1. Giants have never beaten Cole and he's had two career starts. He's 2 and 0. Panic to follow and then Pence. Yeah, it wasn't his first big league win against the Giants. Yeah, it was his first big league start. Hit into right field down the line. And this is going to fall. And Aoki with a big turn. And I don't think Polanco saw that ball. I don't either. Let's take a look at that defense joining Polanco in the outfield from left to right. Marte, McCutcheon, and Polanco. The best arms on the corners with Marte and Polanco. On the left side of the infield will be Kung and Harrison. Walker and Alvarez on the right side. Chris Stewart, a former Giant, and the squad putting down the sides. And here's the. They've been playing him over left and right center. And just the way that he pursued that ball, I, I don't think he had a good view of it either. So here's Panic. But you didn't see. Noria Aoki try and challenge Polanco, and that's a wise move. He's got a really good arm. Well, that's what maybe Polanco was looking up into. <laughs> At the knees to panic. Panic a big home run yesterday. And suffered a tough, tough loss, but Panic had one of the real big hits in that game. Center field for McCutcheon. And McCutcheon will put it away for out number one. All I want for my 21st birthday is a Giants win. Well, happy birthday. The Gamer Babes are here. Let's see if the Giants can produce that. Here's Pence. Pence hitting at 254. Aoki with his lead. He goes. Pence with a swing and a miss. There's the throw, and it's not in time. Number 12 on the year for Nori Aoki. Well, we're going to make it our Ford Wright choice. And Giants fans, remember, Chris Stewart has an outstanding arm, but he doesn't get a lot of help from Garrett Cole. He's very slow out of the stretch, and the Giants taking advantage of this. Stewart trying to hustle and hurry the throw. To no avail. Way outside, one ball and one strike. Smile smooth. Oh, yeah. Pence has always hit the Pirates well. Pence, two for 16 in the Brave series. 
Had a big triple in that series. On the ground sharply to the shortstop Tung. And his throw is high and safe at first is Fence. Now this is one that's going to get reviewed. Pirates immediately headed towards the phone to see with the. And there's your answer right there. He's safe. I thought that Alvarez, the first baseman, may have come down and beat Pence. Not the case. So comes first opportunity. And he gets it air. Doesn't have a great arm. He's got to get rid of it quickly. It's our expo brought to you by your local Toyota dealer. And there you see Alvarez coming off the base. And he never came back and landed on him. And if he comes back on top of it, Pence could have been out. So here's Posey. Pretty good example of why you run hard all the time. All the time. Posey takes low. He's 0 for 3 in his career against Garrett Cole. Swing and a miss. One ball and one strike. It's a hard breaking ball right there. Good look from behind home plate. You can see the quickness and the snap of it. Look out. Two balls and a strike on the, the fastball in to Buster Posey. Brandon Belt is on deck. Last pitch was a two seed fastball. You really can see the movement that really bored in on the hands of Posey. Four seed fastball with a little cut that runs away from Posey. And that gets away. And now the Giants will have runners at second and third. View of the, of the two seam fastball. Watch the movement coming into the hitter. And that's what a two seam fastball will do up around the bait belt. It'll fade into you. The lower you get that, you get a little more tilt, a little more sink on it, but lots of movement and at 95 miles per hour. A 3 1 paint job at 97. And with first base open, if you're Buster Posey, you don't know what you're going to get here. You could get just about anything. Well, anything in the middle of the strike zone is a mistake. Got him. Here's our Togo's big play, the Togo's way. Yesterday against the Braves, Belt and Crawford went back to back. Little cutter that was just above the knee, middle end. Boom. And this place lit up, and no sooner did Crawford come up and he relit 41,000 people the same way. Here's Belt. Belt's got a double and a home run lifetime against Cole in seven at bats. And he shoots him down the right field line a fair ball. Alki scores. Kent scores. Belt with a double. Two nothing Giants. And that's how you pick up your teammate. And he does it on the first pitch. He beats the scout report. A lot of teams been pitching him on the hands. Uh, the guy's six foot five. That's the first place you're going to test, especially when you have a quality fastball like Cole. Two seamer right at the belt. Pin arm swing, and he just digs it out down the line. And watch the elbows collapse as he barrels this thing. And that is technique, folks. And that is something he was not doing early in the year. And he has beaten that pitch consistently now. And indeed, he picked up Buster Posey with that hit. So here's Crawford. Crawford hitting at 299 with seven home runs. 34 driven in. 
And he pulls the first pitch foul. Oh, that's Rich. A, that's a bad hop. He is the lord of the bad hops. Right now he is. He can't catch a break down there. I'm, I'm, my suggestion for Rich is next year about this time. Yeah. Donate that glove to the glove drive. <laughs> well, okay. It's not working. Oh! Schinberger. Crawford skies one out into right center field. Two outfielders calling for it, but it's going to be McCutcheon. And that'll end the inning. Giants on the board twice on the belt double. Second inning coming up. And Ryan Vogelsong won his first start for the Giants at Pittsburgh. He went 2,412 days between wins as a starter. It marked the first start in the big league since September 29th of 04 in Philadelphia. And we remember that day. Here's Starling Marte who takes a strike. Marte hitting 243. Check that 265. 10 home runs, 34 driven in. So he's turned out to be a really good player, Marte. Leads this club in home runs and in RBIs. A lot of people in the National League believe that the Pittsburgh Pirates have the best collective outfield group. Marte, a part of that group. He's a talent. Taps this one foul. See the glove that Ryan Vogelson has. It's a Marucci. We commented on his glove and we asked him about it. He said, Well, you guys have the glove drive going. I'll send you up a couple. So he did. Marucci? Marucci. Not to be confused with the old 49er coach. No, that's Mariucci. Okay, so this is Marucci, and the, and the gloves are really fabulous. And uh, these will be donated to the glove drive. So thank you. This is some of the best leather I've ever seen. Yeah, fantastic. Beautiful. Hit on the ground to Duffy. Duffy from deep third. Got him. Let's check in with Amy G. 
right, guys, Matt Cain told me that he is feeling the best he has felt in a long time, which means he will indeed head to Arizona tomorrow. He is slated to face hitters in an extended spring training game on Wednesday, three innings or 45 pitches. He said it's so nice to make some progress and face hitters. It gets a little old, play and catch, and gets a little bit stale. So to face some hitters, he said he's feeling fresh, he's feeling good, and he's got some momentum in getting better, guys. All right, well, that's all good news. Is here's Pedro Alvarez. Alvarez hitting with the overshift, and he takes a strike. Former third baseman who had trouble throwing, and now he's at first. Lots and lots of power. And a quick 0 2. Alvarez two for 13 in his career against Ryan Vogelson. Duffy now at the shortstop position. And in a three pitch see you later. Take a look at the San Francisco era lowest May ERA of a minimum of 25 innings pitch Rick Russell on top of the heap 084 Oral Hershiser 98 086. Well Ryan Vogelson. Put his name on the list with Vita Blue and Mike McCormick and Juan Marichal. That's a pretty good six of them right there. I miss Big Daddy. One of the best I ever played with. Ryan Vogels on 1 1 4 ERA. Completely turned his season around. Here's Jung Ho Kung and he takes a call strike. This guy's got some pop hitting 291. Although his error in the Bottom of the first really hurt the Pirates and Garrett Cole. I want to get that. Yeah, that's. I don't know what it is, but I want to. Well, I know. I know the, the garlic fries, obviously. I mean, we can smell those from here. One one pitch. Two balls and one strike. Stewart to follow. If Kung reaches, it's two balls and one strike. And this is hit off the end of the bat. And Panic will throw the belt on the run, and that'll end the inning. Pagan Duffy Vogelson coming up. is brought to you by Casino Matrix, Silicon Valley's premier 24-7 entertainment destination.
All right, when Father's Day is coming up, well, it's coming pretty quick. Giants have perfect gifts for Giants fans. It's Father's Day gift pack starting as low as $49. Gift pack includes tickets to two Giants games and world champion cufflinks. Go to smgiants.com slash mini pack. Pitch to Pagan is up and in. One ball and no strikes. Pagan hitting at 305. He's four for 16 on the homestand. And a third is Harrison. And this is hit high and foul down the left field line and out of play. Giants scored their runs in the first inning on a couple of hits in an error. John bounces this one to second, where Walker gloves it and throws it. So Pagan's retired, and here's Duffy. Hey, the Ninja Turtles are here. Yes, they are. I, t I have to tell you something. There, it's been a long time, but they were pretty popular in our house. Oh, are you kidding me? They get they get reborn when my grandson came around. <laughs> He's way into them. And, and I never quite saw it, but boy, the kids sure loved it. End up going to a couple of the movies and wow. I do I do dig the one knit cap though, I gotta tell you. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. He's rocking it. <laughs> this is not the first time he's had that on. Uh. Duffy. Three pitches. Two down for Vogelsong. So Vogelsong is going to hit. He's three for 17. And the first pitch is low. Giants come in 30 and 22. Pirates are 26 and 24. Don't you get a little bit of a trim? They get tightened up. Out of play. One and two. Got a man making a play. Deadhead. Happiest can be. Very high, two and two. I don't know many deadheads that aren't. No, happy. that's true. Sight. The great Bill Walton line about three years ago, and he was sitting between us and. Jeff said in our headsets, well, we're going to look at some flashbacks on Bill Walton's career. And I said, well, let's look at some flashbacks. And Walton said, I love flashbacks. <laughs> and that will retire the side just in time. <laughs> Get us out of here. I love flashbacks. Do nothing, Giants.
presented by Half Moon Bay Brewing Company. My partner will be the host, and he'll be joined by special giants for a pregame Q&A. The special ticket gamer package includes a ticket to the game, pregame baseball insiders Q&A, and a gamer driver cab. For tickets, visit SF, sfgiants.com slash special events. Chris Stewart's going to lead things off. It'll be Stewart, Garrett Cole, and then Josh Harrison. Giants with a 2 0 lead on a belt double to knock in a pair in the first. Born and raised in Pittsburgh, living the dream in California. Is that Pittsburgh, California, or Pittsburgh, PA? Pittsburgh, PA. Well, it just makes a better story. Stewart takes a strike. Stewart hitting 260. He's got six runs batted in. And he shows Bun and he takes the pitch high. And he will drag Bun a lot. He's a good bunner. One and two. And I think what we're seeing is what you talked about, Mike, with Greg Papa and the fellas, the command of the fastball. But it really has been the difference with Vogelson. But now he has the confidence to get it in the strike zone, especially early. Uh, early in April, I don't think he believed in this stuff. And it wasn't until he bottomed out and start against the Dodgers when they had three or four home runs against them and one out again. And after that, he just said, the heck with it. If I'm going down, I'm going down with gun displays. And he got much more aggressive, had more finish on the fastball. He shortened up the circle in his arm. And then just like that, he got it back. It was Chris Stewart's first career home run. It came against the Pirates. August 9th, 2011. How about that? Two and two. Tapped to Vogelsong. He's got some spin on it. He will underhand it to Belt. One out. And here's Garrett Cole. Suhu is a good hitter, by the way. He's not afraid to dig in. Guys that throw that hard are not afraid. No, they they know they're in. not going to get hit. Yeah, they can dig in all they want. And the strike and it's 0 and 1. I've told the story before. Boot Powell used to dig in, left handed hitter, and where he dug in, that's where everybody else had to hit from. <laughs> that was it. Because he dug a hole. 0 and 2. Mounds have changed. Batters boxes have changed. They have. And grounds creep keepers have really figured it out. And it used to be that you would see grounds crew in the middle of a game two or three times coming out to repair a mound. And batters boxes would just completely be destroyed by the third inning with big holes in them. But now because of the clay composite that they have in the mound mix. And the batter's box mix, they hold up a whole lot better. Two and two to Garrett Cole. Yeah, he's got the ring on. Yeah, that's me. Pulled on the ground. Duffy. They straighten up and throw, and he throws it over everybody. I got this one and then got underneath it and just airmailed over Belt. And I mean, you've got to really throw one high to get it over the six foot five inch first baseman. 
Well, look, he did everything right. He took his time. And then, like you said, he just got underneath it. So now the Pirates have a runner at second, and the hitter will be Josh Harrison. And takes outside for a ball one and oh he hit a fly ball to right field to open up the ball game. Gregory Polanco on deck we're in the Top of the third inning. Nope. Three and oh. So Vogelsong will take a little bit of a walk. In the mindset of a big league pitcher, especially a guy who's been around as long as Vogelsong. He'll turn 38 years old in July. This is his ninth year at the big league level. When there's an error behind him, you don't get mad. You just say, I take the challenge. And the challenge is I'm going to pick my teammate up. I'm going to I'm going to pitch through that air. So that run that he allowed to get on or that runner that he allowed to get on is not going to score. And it's such a great way to think because if you're angry or ticked off, you're not going to be able to put all your concentration on the next pitch. And the walk. Well, check out the Warriors NBA Finals pre and post Sportsnet Central coverage and hour before every game post game and on Sportsnet Central all the way through the playoffs. Game one coverage begins Thursday at 5 p.m. Everybody wishes the Warriors well. Such an exciting story. Yeah. Jeff Curry here on Friday night. Here's Polanco who hit a fly ball to left field. And here he takes a strike and it's 0 and 1. Cole at second, Harrison at first. Hit on the ground and a base hit. And they're going to hold up Cole. And that was a smart move. And now they're loaded. Cole had a head of steam. I thought he was going to run right through a stop sign. Now you've got a good assist arm in right field. Cole not the fastest guy on the team, certainly. And with one out, McCutcheon coming up, really not a good decision for Rick Sofield, the third base coach, to send the big fella. Slow him down. And now the table's set. The bags are full for McCutcheon. McCutcheon singled in the first. See how he started out hitting 194 the first 21 games, and in the last 28, he's been hot. And it's strike, and it's only one. And the catching, you cannot give him a steady diet of one thing. I mean, you really have to move it around. You got to change location. You got to change speeds, change movements. And you cannot make mistakes out of the middle of the plate. Other than that, he's pretty easy to pitch to. Here's the 0-1 coming up. Curveball hit into left center field. Is anybody there? Pagan makes an incredible catch. Unbelievable.
It ends up being a sacrifice fly. But my word, was that a great play. Wow, they just replayed on the big board. Now you get a chance to see it here. I didn't think he had a chance to get it. And when he finally commits to it, completely extended, catches it on a backhand, and then he gets it back in the infield. And he gets it back to the tune where Josh Harrison cannot advance from second to third. If he doesn't catch that ball, three run score. Defensive brilliance right there. Complete extension to the backhand. Wow. Sacrifice fly, and here's Walker. And Walker goes around, and it's 0 and 1. Walker struck out looking. He did that to end the first inning. Pops this one back and out of play. Two pitches, two cut fastballs right in on the hands. Is a Roberto Clemente jersey. Who will never be forgotten. And not just in Pittsburgh. Pagan, like Clemente from Puerto Rico. Got him again. So Pagan saves the day, and he really keeps the Giants in front. What a great play. It's the Giants 2 and the Pirates 1. is brought to you by Joseph Abood, available at Men's Warehouse. It's a 2-1 lead for the Giants. And here's Nori Aoki to lead things off. And he takes a strike. A single. To open up the bottom of the first for Aoki. Perhaps this one foul. Panic. And then Pence.
Got him. 96 mile an hour fastball. Four seam in it. So here's Panic. Not an easy thing to do to strike out out. Yeah, I think I hope he was a little shocked at that. So Panic, who hit a fly ball to center, steps up. And he takes a strike. Hunter Pence to follow. Two to one lead for the Giants here in the third. Tap foul. It's now one and two. One ball, two strikes. Panic pulls it foul. Billy Hayes knocks it down. You, know, you saw Crawford and Pagan talking to the dugout, and they normally during the course of a ball game, especially when teams are hitting, they'll talk about hitting. But with these two guys here, that may be a conversation about defense. You're right, absolutely. On the ground, under the glove of Harrison into left field. So panic is aboard. Going to be a base hit. Yeah, they, they had the shift on. They put Harrison over the five and a half hole, and he only had to do about one step to his backhand. And this is one that you know, he, I'm sure he's disappointed he didn't make a play on. So panic with a break, and the Giants get a break as well. Here's Pence. Pence reached on the Kung throwing error in the first inning. And he takes outside for a ball. Buster Posey to follow. A Monday night baseball game here at AT&T Park. This is game five of the homestand. Nope. Two balls and no strikes. Got another gear that he could get into. When you get runners to score position on him, he really reaches back. Oh. A strike there. But for the most part, I mean, he throws at a speed that he can control, which will put him between 93 and 96. But when he wants to amp up, he can go at high 90s. And a lot of times you'll see him hit the high 90s velocity in two strike counts. And the walk. Take a look at what Garrett Cole throws, and you see a lot of fastballs 69% of the time, and he will two in four seam that. And then the slider is his go to pitch. You just saw it in the 3 1 count there that he missed with to, to Hunter Pence. But the change of curveball, both projects at this time in his career, and those those will develop as he ages in this game. He's basically learning how to pitch at the big league level, but with his talent, he can do that, do it effectively. Here's Buster Posey. Buster saw a couple of sliders and struck out in the first inning. Here he takes a breaking ball for a ball one and oh. And a strike right at the knees. One ball and one strike. Brandon Belt on deck. Out. 
out of play. One and two. So the Giants with pretty good speed on the bases. On the ground to third. Harrison with a nice play there. Walker with a nice turn. And that will end the inning. It goes around the horn. We will head to the fourth. There remains Giants 2, Pirates 1. Back to the 2014 wildcard game. And this is the last out of a incredible performance from Madison Bumgarner. And now the celebration as the Giants would then head on to Washington. A one game loser go home. The Giants got to go on. And of course, they added another championship. Four celebrations. Actually, five, right? Yeah. yeah. Clinch a spot to get into postseason and then wild card and then three more series after that. There's a strike to Marte. It'll be Marte, Alvarez, and Kung. You know the thing about the Giants, in every one of their championship runs, they were never the favorite in any series. I mean, you could say maybe in 2010, the series with Atlanta, it was a you pick them. That's as close as they got to be in a favorite. And yet, it was all over. Bruce Bochy got to carry the trophy down Market Street. Here's the 2 1. Swinging a foul out of play. Yeah, we thought one was. That's it. It's all we need. We got one. We're good. And then 2012, that's all we need is two. <laughs> well, well, now we're spoiled. Now it's time to get greedy. Yeah, now it's time to go for the odd year. 2 2 pitch. Hit on the ground to Belt. Belt over towards the line. And Belt will just beat Marte to the bag. Here's our Geico quote, quote Brendan Crawford uh, hitting the po first postseason Grand Slam by a shortstop yeah, in the uh, Major season. League. History. That's crazy with all the great shortstops that have played before. That's pretty special. I'm happy to be able to do it. Grand slams and winner take all games. And Moose Scourin, Troy O'Leary, Johnny Damon, Buster Posey, Brandon Crawford. And uh, Giants fans got to see two of the five.
So here's Alvarez. Alvarez takes inside two balls and no strikes. Alvarez has been a third baseman. All of his career. First round pick. I mean we're talking the number one guy. And then. He just sort of. Developed the first baseman body. Couldn't throw. Couldn't throw move him over. Breaks his bat. Belt. The Vogel song just like you do it. 40 days in a row in spring training. <laughs> Seems like 90. And the whole point is, is when you do it that much, you want it to become repetition. Don't even think about it. And it's the first step to the bag at first for a pitcher, which is the one that has to become instinctive. And catchers on every play like this will yell the same two words that they yell in spring training, and they'll do it all year. And that is get over. There's a strike. You kind of want to yell with them and then put it at the end of it. Get over it. Get over it. <laughs> we know already. Clayton Kershaw has a nine run lead in Colorado over the Rockies. You know what? I think that's pretty good. I think he has a chance to get a win. I do. It's 11 to 2. Kung from Seoul, Korea. Did a little bit of a wind up in his swing. He tore up the Korean leagues last year. Had 40 home runs. Hit 356. Hit 117. You know, that's in 117 games. Two and two. First saw him in the 2013 World Baseball Classic, and you know, he was really a standout. A lot of people then said this guy's going to be a big league player, and here he is. And as it turned out, when the Pirates got him this offseason, it was a big deal. I mean, a lot of people thought it was a bit of a risk, but he has really made that you know, contract look good. He's had a nice first half for the Giants as he gets activated in this league. Hit to right. Now Hunter Pence way out in triples alley will put it away and that'll end the inning. One two three inning for Vogelsong and Belt's gonna hit. Giants does something well, but we also want to brag when something good just happens in Major League Baseball. This one, shout out to Andrew McCutcheon of the Pirates. The other night after a win over the Padres, he ran out to two little Bucks fans and gave them his 
batting gloves, a couple of fist pumps, and he not only made their night, he might have made their year as you can see the little boy shouting out i love you i love you i talked to andrew about it today he was so humble you guys he said you know what this is just something that a lot of athletes in all sports tend to do often and he really didn't want to be singled out but we decided to single it out because we thought it was absolutely awesome and we hope we see a lot more of it i love you Dwayne and mike i love you <laughs> oh well yeah that's <laughs> easy abg it was a great story, and you really could see that same thing happening around baseball in every ballpark on uh, an everyday basis. But it doesn't take much to lock the imagination of a young player, boy or girl, and lock it in for life. Those two little guys that Andrew McCutcheon singled out, you think they're, they're ever going to forget that moment? Never. Here's Cole to Belt, and Cole probably ticked off at Belt's base hit, so he comes inside. Maybe not to hit him, but to knock him off the plate. It's one and zero, and definitely move his legs. One ball and one strike. Oh, overshift is on. Get a guy ticked off, and you kind of throw something soft in the outside corner and paint him. That's 96 mile an hour two seam movement that's running away, sinking away from from belt. Very high. This was the base hit. Belt kind of dug it out. It was not a hanger. I mean, they, they set up inside. It was right at the belt. It's right to the scout report. I mean, just, he just out techniqued him and the two out knocked him. Did the Giants a two one lead? And this time. Garrett Cole gives Belt the stank eye after he strikes him out. The only thing he was trying to do was strike him out. I haven't seen a good stank eye like this in a long time. Slider, you can see the little eye on the slider, back foot. Take that. That's exactly what he said. And you can see the stare down after he struck him out. Here's Crawford. Has your teammates at UCLA. Old friends. Not for long. Two balls and no strikes. Pagan so to follow. Guy strikes you out after you have a, a base hit that had two RBIs your first bat. He strikes you out your second at bat like that. Gives you a little stank guy. You're thinking about that guy going into that third AB, aren't you? Yep, absolutely. It's a roll foul. Well, you know that you got his attention in the first at bat, and he now got your attention in the second at bat. Foul again. It's two and two. That's his changeup at 90. Two and two. Out of play. Came at him with. A 97 mile an hour fastball. Two balls, two strikes, nobody on, one out. And it's a full count. Just a bit inside. See how Cole started out in April 4 0 with a 176 ERA. Got him. No stink guide to the old teammate. Yeah. Possible future go to him. Great catch by Pagan to keep the Giants in front. This is bases loaded. One out. 
And just go to a little backhand and absolutely salvage the inning. That would have been three runs on the board for the Pirates. And Vogelsong saying, you the man. So here's Pagan. Pagan is 0 for 1. He bounced out in the second inning. And here he takes a strike. See the strike zone expand a little bit, which is pretty much how Adrian Johnson goes. Tight early, loosens up as you go. This is definitely a gift. That is a gift. Got him. And they'll end the inning. So Pagan now says something to Adrian Johnson. I think Johnson. Walked away and knew that he missed one. Giants lead two to one. Day Area is brought to you by the Solar Company. Not just any solar company. The Solar Company. Switch to solar and save. Giants with a two to one lead as Chris Stewart's going to lead things off. And Stewart takes a strike. Stewart bounced to Vogelsong. In the third inning. Just outside with. The fastball one ball and one strike. You know it's kind of weird to think that a six foot four inch catcher. You have to take the bunt away which is what the Giants are doing with Duffy playing even with a bag of third. But. Stewart you have to do it. He, he could bunt at any time. He could bunt with two strikes. Which makes him kind of a rare bird when you consider his position and his size. One and two. Garrett Cole to follow. Two balls, two strikes. The song will throw pitch number 68 here to Chris Stewart. And Stewart hammers this one down the left field line, and that's a fair ball. 
So the tying run now at second base with nobody out. Well, Giants fans, next time you're looking for great seats, check out StubHub, where there are no surprise fees at checkout. That's right on StubHub. The price you see is the price you pay. Plus, with the StubHub app, you can buy and sell Giants tickets anytime, anywhere, right from your smartphone. StubHub, the official fan-to-fan -fan ticket marketplace of the San Francisco Giants. So here's Garrett Cole. Cole reached on a Duffy throwing error in the third inning. And he squares around a bun and he takes a ball one and oh. So Stewart opens up the inning with a two bagger. The first extra base hit by the Pirates and the third in the game. Belt crashing. And that's a good bunt. And Buster's going to go to third, and they got him. What a great throw by Buster Posey. Now, before we write it down, Clint Hurdle's going to have everybody look at it, as most managers would do on a close play. Well, the throw had to be perfect. And this is not going to be contested. He's out. And you remember, there's no. No force there. I mean, it's got to be a tag play, so it has to be perfect. Because if you don't get the runner third, now you're looking at a runner first and third, nobody out. Nice play. So here's Harrison now with Cole, the base runner at first. Swing and a miss. Well, you play tight games, and those are the plays you have to make. Down the right field line. Uh, I'm safe to say that that pitch that Harrison just swung at was not a strike. I bet that was out to play about 10 inches. Have a little cut action to it. And Harris is not a big guy, but he could definitely expand and cover that outside part. And the guy jumps like that, he is exposed middle end. So Vogelson said, All right, let's see how far you'll go. That's exactly what that pitch was all about. One ball and two strikes. And there's the fastball in. And it got him. So that'll put Cole in scoring position. Well, that's a 90 foot mistake. I mean, you hate to hit a guy when you have an 0 2 or 1 2 count. 29th pirate that's been hit by a pitch. Trying to throw it inside, it just he seeks it just clips him on the back of his left leg and the shin of his right, so he didn't really get hit solidly, which is why he can smile right now. Here's Polanco who singled in the third. And he looks at a strike and it's 0 and 1. You know that that Stat you just saw up there about the Pirates being hit more than any other team. That doesn't surprise me given that they were the leaders last year in hitting opponents. They hit by far, they hit more people than anybody else in the National League last year. And that's the type of thing that teams don't forget. It definitely makes it easier to pitch inside the next year when you get the reputation of a team that's pitching aggressively inside and will hit hitters. Up and in, one ball and one strike. McCutcheon on deck. The 
one and two. And you know, Mount our paint just simply changed the grip on the fastball. That was two seam movement running away. So two pitches early in the account that went towards Polanco with movement. And then this one in a 1 1 count, he, he goes away. And that's just an example of how fastball can be two different pitches. You have his understanding and his ability to locate to make it work. He follows this one back. New baseballs for home plate umpire Adrian Johnson. One and two. And he did not go around. Two and two. Jim Wolf, third base umpire, says no swing. All right, let's take a look. Did he go? No. Unless it's a spring training game. Exactly. Two and two. Well, Rogersong does not want to get put in the spot again where he's got to face McCutcheon with the bases loaded. And that was his one chance to kind of throw it to his location. I mean, you, you could say he's got an open base. He doesn't. You don't want to give up third base with one out. So he doesn't have an open base here. He has a challenge, especially with Andrew McCutcheon, who's been hot on deck. Bochi given Adrian Johnson and absolute earful. Well he's basically saying if the pitch to Pagan was a strike. That's exactly what he's saying. So uh, Bochi gets a few things off his chest. Adrian Johnson, Dave Rigetti coming out to try and just calm things down a little bit because you sense a little anger on the part of Ryan Volgason. the pitch. I mean, it would have been a pitcher strike. I, I think it would have been a low strike. The only reason you make an argument for that pitch is because of what happened to Pagan and his at bat. There was one called lower than that. So for the second at bat in a row now for Cutchin, he's going to hit with the bases loaded. Touching single off of Duffy in the first inning. And then with the bases loaded, it was a great play by Pagan to track a ball down in left center field. This was the second strike in the at bat to Pagan that was in question, but it basically set a precedent. And if you're Bruce Bochy and you're watching it from the side, that's what you see. You see height, you can't see in and out. Fouled out of play, one ball and one strike. See the numbers with runners in scoring position. And they are in scoring position. One ball and one strike. One and two. Perfect pitch from Bogusong. And now the Pirates are going and saying that's the same height just called ball four to Polanco. It's not easy being an umpire. See if Bogusong goes back to the same spot. Get into the gap. Pence on the move. 
Pence is going to make the sliding catch. Cole's going to score, and this game is tied. Well, two times McCutcheon has been robbed by great defense. Pagan got him in the last at bat with the bases loaded. Here is Hunter Pence. You can see the way that McCutcheon leaves the box. He's thinking he's got extra bags. And Pitt says, I, I don't think so. I don't think he ever saw where he hit it. So here's Walker. I agree with you. He's not a guy that doesn't hustle. He plays a game like Hunter Pence does. Walker takes low, one ball and no strike. Cole has scored both the Pirates runs tonight. There's a shot into the gap and this is going to give the Pirates the lead. Harrison scores right behind him Polanco scores and it's now four to two. Now Walker had ownage on Vogelsong coming into this game. But his first two at bats, he struck out looking, not this time. And he does a nice job of going with the, the movement, the location, two seat movement running away. Stays down nicely through an opposite field gapper. Flip this way. So here's Marte. And Marte takes a strike. The two at bats in the inning that really have hurt Vogelsong was Harrison getting hit and Polanco walking. Driven to right. Pence is there and that'll end the inning. Guys now have some work to do. It's 4 2 Pirates. Right handers doing battle. AJ Burnett, the veteran, off to a great start. 10 starts, 5 and 1 with a 1 8 1 ERA. Taking on the rook, Chris Heston, in 10 starts. He has been 
fantastic. Five and three with a 3 8 2. And they will do battle in game two tomorrow night, 7 15. See it right here on Comcast Sports in the Bay Area. There's the Murph and Mac bobblehead, which, if you had a special ticket, you got one of those. We know those guys. We know them right around 7 35 every morning. There's the pitch down low. Duffy struck out on three pitches in the second. It was Meadow to keep getting loose. Logosong's songs on deck. This is sky to left. Marte will put it away. One out. So here's Vogelsong. Had Duffy reached, then Vogelsong would have been hit for it. Vogelsong bounced out to short in the second inning. And a quick 0 2 to Ryan Vogelson. Four hits for the Pirates, three hits for the Giants. This is bounce to Alvarez, who will flip it to cold covering. It's not an easy hot. No, it wasn't. So here's Nori Aoki. Aoki is one for two. Get on the ground to Walker, and this will end the inning. So an eight-pitch inning for Garrett Cole, and we'll head to the sixth. 4-2 Pirates.
The first 20,000 fans are going to receive a World Champions reusable grocery tote courtesy of MLB Network. SFGiants.com slash tickets. Here's Pedro Alvarez to lead it off 4 2. Pirates Alvarez is 0 for 2. Well, she's an Elsa fan. She likes garlic fries. And she likes her big sister. No balls in one strike. Overshift is on and a swing and a miss. Nothing in two. On deck is Jung Ho Kung. And then Chris Stewart. Just a way away. Curveball first pitch, change up second pitch, and a little paralysis fastball. See Clint Hurdle, the skipper of the Pirates. He got him. All right, let's check in with Amy G. Amy. All right, guys, before the game, we reminded everyone of Brandon Crawford's Grand Slam and that wild card game against the Pirates in uh, 2014, October 1st. But let us not forget Madison Bumgarner and the job he did, a complete game shutout. Now, I interviewed Javi Lopez before that game, and I said, how are you preparing for this? You know, pretty serious, one game and done. If you lose, he said, oh, I'm not worried at all. Actually, I'm not going to prepare at all because Bum's going to throw a complete game shutout. Javi Lopez, crystal ball. Who knew? Guys? Yeah, he knows. He knows. You're right. It was a night off for the pin. Swing and a miss. One ball and one strike. Hold the song with the 96 pitch of his outing his foul back one and two. The problem for Vogel's song in this game is he's pitched pretty good, but due to different circumstances, the right guys came up for the Pirates at the right time. And that would be Andrew McCutcheon with the bases loaded and one out twice. Change up for the two seam grip to sort of wrap it around that outside corner. As it was a tight strike zone early, it has completely loosened up. It's just a rough at bat right there. Here's Stewart who opened up the fifth with a double. Had two games postponed today. They did. Toronto was playing in Washington. Postponed. Minnesota in Boston. Postponed. Oh. It's that time of year. Two and other Stewart. Some of the best parts about playing in California. We don't have a lot of rainouts. No. Line drive down the right field line. Stewart is two for three. And he's got his second double of the game. When Chris Stewart was with the Giants, he had a great reputation for defense. It's a double play that he started in San Diego in 2011. Always had an exceptional throw there. Never had the reputation of being an offensive guy, and this year he is an offensive guy. Now hitting 283 with that second double play. So here's Garrett Cole, who's 
0 for 2, but he scored twice. And Bill Miller said he went around. It's 0 and 1. Well, this is where Garrett Cole likes to be. He's a pretty good hit pitcher. He's certainly not an at bat where he has to worry about a bunt. He can just go up there and hack. Chief, my chief. Her ball hit slowly to Duffy. Duffy will charge and throw, and they got him. And now in the inning. For the Giants, Panic, Pence, Posey, Belton, Crawford coming up. Internet Bay Area is brought to you by Heffernan Insurance Brokers, insurance and financial services for you and your business. Visit HeffINS.com and by Xfinity, home of the most live sports. It's a 4-2 lead for the Pirates. We see five Giants with 30-plus hits in May. This man. It happened in 1970. And then in 1962. So you're going to win some games if you do that, and the Giants did. Now the Giants trail by two. Panic, Pence, and Posey. Garrett Cole made the last out. That's why this inning is dragging on, or this half inning, or middle inning. And uh, Adrian Johnson's watching Cole just take his time. And Adrian Johnson says one more. Stewart lifts up both arms. Let's kind of second base. We know the ball's coming down to him. A lot of little hand signals and science of baseball. This time it's with both arms. So Panic's going to lead things off. He's got the last hit for the Giants. He's singled in the third. Pence to follow. Posey, Belt, and then Crawford. Beginning here for the Giants. 
part of the lineup coming up to face Cole for the third time. Can it look like he might have been taking all the way takes a strike. Just off the plate. That's 71 pitches for Garrett Cole. Down low, two balls and a strike. Giants will take a base runner any way they can. And they'll take it that way. A base hit to center field. That's his job. Get on base, get cold to stretch. They're having a nice year, Joe Penn. Good player. And you can see how, how he's embraced the challenge of a guy who's had one year's experience. The second year, teams adjust to him. Well, he's adjusted back. A smart hitter. Machi and Contos down to the bullpen. Pence has been on base twice. He reached on an air and he walked. And he takes low. Mr. Posey on deck. There's a strike that evens the count. Here Cole staying down right around the knees or a little bit below. And a base hit to right field. Panic will stop. At second, and the Giants with back-to-back -back singles here in the sixth inning. Just going with the outside location. But Alvarez playing even with the bag after he's holding a runner on. He didn't have a lot of range. He didn't have a lot of range anyway. Ball away. Got foot down. Just goes with it. Stays inside it. Sometimes it just looks way too easy, doesn't it? I, I, that sure did. I, mean, I know it's not. I've only tried it a thousand times and it didn't work, but <laughs> it's not that easy. Here's Buster Posey. The plate, one ball and no strikes. Oh, it seems like Posey gets in that batter's box, just like when Barnes got in that batter's box. You'd see the highest velocity that pitcher has on that given night. That last one at 97. And Buster, they're going to check. No, he said he did not go around two and up. Started to go, Buster Posey did. I don't think he's picking up that slider. No, it doesn't seem like it. He... Cole got him swinging twice on that slider in the first inning. Well, he took his legs out in that first inning too, and that's something that doesn't usually happen. Did he go? No, he, did not. he didn't. Three and zero. Oh. He's going to sit on a pitch. He's going to sit on a location. And if he gets it, he'll have at it. Three and one. He took that one. He won't take the next one. He took a little off <laughs> at 97 to get it in. I don't want to play catch with this guy. It's. Three balls and one strike.
And the walk. Pretty easy take right there. And Cole disappointed. And here comes round three between Belt and Cole. Well, Belt won round one with a double to knock in a pair. And Cole won round two. Ray Sears, the pitching coach, is going to come out and talk to Garrett Coldra. This is nothing more than just giving him a bit of a breather. Belt yesterday knocked out his seventh of the year. Little cutter up the knee cap middle in against Julio Tehran. Panic and Pence with singles and a walk to Posey. So a breather for Garrett Cole. So here's Bell to see if Cole pitches out of the windup or the stretch. Stay in windup. Or stretch rather. One ball and no strike. Just a bit outside. Panic, Pence, and Posey. Two balls and no strikes. Sooner or later, he's going to have to throw a strike. He's got no place to put him. Well, Belt is not taking. If he sees something he likes, he's going to unload. There's a strike. Two balls and one strike. 96 mile an hour fastball in the outside corner. And that's a good take right there. I mean, he's not looking middle away. He's looking middle in. That's where he beat Cole in the first pitch of his first at bat for a two RBI base hit. Ball back, two and two. He had a rip. So there's the challenge. And now Cole's got one pitch to do what he wants to do with it. You're right. This is when he can go back foot slider out of the strike zone. He can elevate above the hands. I mean, he's got backdoor breaking ball that he's established in this game. Wrap around the outside corner. I mean, he can throw a changeup. He's got lots of options here. But he doesn't have to throw a strike 2 2. And the pitch. He fouled at the plate. So Belt's going to get another shot. Like Hanging sliders with that one. It's a fly ball situation for Bell, and that's what he's looking to do. And for Cole, he's just trying to strike him out. And he went around. So Cole gets a strike. I remember he fell behind 2 0. Oh. Take a look at the sequence here. He opened up the at bat with a fastball, did not miss by a whole bunch. And he gets into a 2 0 count with this breaking ball down. Now the 2 0, he gets a, a pitch here in the outside corner, then a 2 1 challenge at 96. And he fouls one off, and he comes right back in with a back foot slider. And he can't check the swing. So here's Crawford. Crawford is flied out and struck out. Brendan Belt went around. Yeah, probably did. Uh, 
it's it's the gray area that's 50 50. Half the time they call it, half the time they don't. But you can't really argue either way. See the numbers for Crawford with the bases loaded three grand slams, five doubles. Card game. And that's the one that took the wind out of 43,000 people. It's up the middle, could be a pair. And it is. Giants had him loaded with nobody out. And a 2 0 count on Belt, and it remains 4 2. Vogelsong and Cole starters in this one. Cole still in. Vogelsong's not. Walker, after striking out, looking twice, got the big hit to knock in two to give the Giants the lead. And Belt had a first inning double to score early. When it's time for a change, think Speedy Oil Change and Auto Service, your oil change tune up, and smog experts. G. Machi, the new pitcher now for the Giants, 24th game that he's been into, 1 0 with a 5 6 8 ERA. But she has been having some problems with the consistency of his forkball, which is really his strikeout pitch. See a, a little bit 90s fastball, little slider, and the forkball. So here's Josh Harrison. Harrison doesn't have a hit in this game, but he's done a couple of things to help. The Pirates score. He walked in the third. He was hit by a pitch in the fifth. Heads up. The Rockies ended up losing that one to the Dodgers 11 4 in Colorado. Atlanta leading Arizona 8 to 1. Dodgers Rockies have a double header tomorrow in Colorado. Have you check the weather on that? I'm sure it's going to be 80 and sunny. Line drive, Duffy's got it. What a nice play by Matt Duffy. Well, he didn't have a choice. Playing even with a bag, and this is just a bullet, and it almost takes his glove into left field. Plant, get you your weight 
evenly distributed between both feet. Boom, and now just react. And that's how much time he had, and that's slow motion. Yeah, tough man. Here's Polanco, who's one for two. Walked in the fifth inning, and that set things up for McCutcheon. Lifts it out to left for Aoki. And that'll bring up McCutcheon. Another National League West score. The Mets are in San Diego. And they lead the Padres seven to nothing. Yeah, that's a one hitter. Jacob DeGrom, right handed starting pitcher for the Mets. Yeah, they don't have enough young guys that throw hard, do they? No. <laughs> They've got a herd. Cap foul, one ball and one strike. And that's without the former giant Zach Wheeler with Tommy John this year. Giants will see the Mets on the next trip. Get ready for the Big Apple? I am. Hit high to left field. And that'll end the inning. I'd say McCutcheon just missed that one. Oh, man. Yeah. See some of what has happened here tonight. Some of the images. Some good, some not so good. Pirates lead 4 2. For the Pirates. Well, follow the Giants all season in 2015 with MLB.com at bat, the number one app for live baseball. You can get MLB.com at bat for your smartphone or your tablet. Check it out. So here's Pagan facing the 
Garrett Cole who pitched out of a jam in the sixth. And there's a strike. Pitch number 90 is probably going to be the last inning for Cole. As he has a very quick inning and throws just a few pitches. This is roll foul. All right, this is Mike Peckner. We've been calling Mike Peckner Rich Brown all night long, but Rich got sick, so Mike stepped in. So Mike finally making a play. That'll be it. Yeah, after all the things we said about Rich Brown, he probably even got sicker watching this game. <laughs> we saw left Brown over there on the left field side. One and two. It's a great day. It's good the yard to have some garlic fries. Got him. Pagan knew it. Eight strikeouts for Garrett Cole. Four of those strikeouts have been called strike threes. So here's Duffy. Duffy's 0 for 2. Justin Maxwell, Maxwell has come out of the dugout. And he pulls up, but it's a call strike. It's 0 and 1. Contos get ready. On the ground, Alvarez will make the play. Warriors NBA Finals pre and post Sportsnet Central coverage an hour before every game. Post game and on Sportsnet Central all the way through the playoffs. Game one coverage begins Thursday at five. Here's Maxwell. Maxwell is pinch hitting for Gene Machi. Trying to get on for Nori Aoki, and there's a strike, and it's 0 and 1. Some paint. 95. So, from Maxwell's perspective, one to measure, one to rake. There you see 97 pitches on the day. 0 and 2. 95 on the black strike one, then you pull the string, you break the ball at 85, and you're way out front. Now you're immediately in the protect mode. Tapped on the ground, foul. And I'll end the inning. Nine strikeouts for Garrett Cole. It remains four two Pirates.
Monterey Bay Aquarium. Share the wonder, share the love at MontereyBayAquarium.org slash love. Share the awe. It is awesome. <laughs> it's a great place. Indeed it is. 4-2 lead for the Pirates when it's time for a change. Thanks to the oil change and auto service here. Oil change tune-up and smog experts. George Contos, 1-0 with a 1980 ERA in 25 games. Has been amazingly consistent. A nice first half. They see Neil Walker. Walker with the big hit in the game. A double to knock in a pair in the fifth. Marte and then Alvarez. Slight pull in the infield in defense of Neil Walker. It's this one out to Pagan in center field, and Pagan will put it away. All right, let's check into the MEG. All right, gentlemen, as you well know, this world of baseball, very, very small. Bruce Bochy and the Pirates manager, Clint Hurdle, have known each other for more than 40 years. They actually played high school baseball against each other. Hurdle went to Merritt Island High School in Florida. Of course, Bochy went to Melbourne High School. Then they played Legion League together, and they played winter ball together in Venezuela. Bruce Bochy said, looking back, he's not surprised Hurdle became a manager because he remembers how much he loved the game and how well he knew the game. Dwayne? Good point. Here's Marte. And this is bounce foul. No balls in one strike. Marte is 0 for 3. That feels straight away for Marte. That pitch is high. Such a different George Contos than we've seen in previous years because he has so many more things he can do with the ball. And he's confident to throw. Swing. And miss one and two. I mean, you're out there and you think you have magic pitches that can't be hit. <laughs> Life is good. And that's kind of where George has been this whole first half. Got him. Well, stay tuned immediately after Giants baseball for insurance Giants post game live. You get highlights, reaction, and analysis, and it's all coming up right after the game. So here's Pedro Alvarez. Alvarez has struck out twice. But he's the kind of guy that can strike out three times against you. And then the one time he'll hit you in the pond. Don't make a mistake. He's got big power. Out of play, you can see the the hard swing he takes. Probably got a heavy bat as strong as he is. Hey, the right guy got the ball. Nice going. Brought his glove. His dad brought his glove. High five for mom. It's a great night at the yard. Yes, it is. And that pitch is high. Witness protection. 
Two balls and one strike. I didn't recognize. On the ground and one hop to Panic and shallow right field, and that'll end the inning. All right, top of the order for the Giants. It's four two. Some of the action tonight with the Pirates leading four to two. Tony Watson is the new pitcher. He's a lefty. When it's time for a change, think Speedy Oil Change and Auto Service, your oil change tune up and smog experts. Great numbers from Watson, the setup man. Big chopper and a fair ball. And Alki is going to hit first and go to second and make it. And that's how the bottom of the eighth gets started. A bit of an unorthodox double, but a double nevertheless. Well, swing at the first pitch, just kind of digs it out. They're playing Harrison up on the grass in respect of a possible bunt just over the the web. And once this gets by Harrison, I hope you think it two bagger. And an easy take a second. So a leadoff base hit against a guy that doesn't give up a lot of hits, and that's Watson, who's only given up 15, well now 16 in 28 innings. So here's Panic. Panic takes a strike. Watson, you're going to get an easy 95 or mid 90s and a slider and a great changeup. Sean Rodriguez is now at first. Panic gets a high drive in a deep right center field. It'll be Polanco who's going to make the catch. And Aoki makes it to third. Well, at this point, the Pirates are looking for outs, and Panic got a hold of one, but not in this part. Not in this park indeed. Now Sergio Romo getting loose. So Penn steps in. And Pence bounces one to short. Pence is retired. Alfie scores. It's four to three. 
not really what Pence was looking for, but he does pick up an RBI, his 13th of the year. Post game wrap is coming up in just a bit, and I'll talk about the game with Murph and Mac tomorrow morning on KMBR 680. So here's Buster Posey. So he hits a high fly ball down the right field line, and that's going to be out of play. Couldn't tell a fan reached over into fair territory and caught this ball. Well, Chris Stewart's arguing with home plate umpire Adrian Johnson. Clint Hurdle's going to go out. The guy that had the best look at it was Bill Miller. Oh, I think he'd have caught that ball. But I think it was in the seats. So if it's in the seats, and I agree with you. If the fan is it, if he's making a play, it's on the fan side of the fence. He's entitled to the ball. Oh, you look at this one here, though, and you can see the look that yeah, Chris Stewart out. had. If they think he interfered with the play, they could call him out. And he definitely interfered with the yeah, play. Absolutely, he should be out. They're going to look at it. This replay review is presented by Xfinity. So I do believe that the inning is going to be over. Bill Miller, the crew chief on the left. And replaying it here at the ballpark. And the first cheer was. The first look you saw when it looked like it was on the stand side of the fence. Now they're also hooting and hollering at the Pirates fan who interfered with the Pirate player. They definitely cost Polanco a chance to catch the ball. And I don't think he really touched it, but he just blocked it. Well, if he didn't touch it, then it's okay. <laughs> Well, we'll see how it's ruled. Can't interfere. There is some irony that it was a Pirates fan that interfered. I mean, it, it, it could go either way. It really could. Well, from our standpoint, if that's the case, then then we're being optimistic. Let's put it that way. Pirates fan is leaving, and he's, I guess he's probably hearing it a bit from Giants fans. But if if they escort him out, and they're only doing that because then our security people think that it was interference. With. <laughs> so if they rule this. A non play, then you got to bring the guy back. So he's out. So that will indeed end the inning. The Giants do pick up a run. So we'll go to the ninth.
the San Francisco Giants. It may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form, and the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of San Francisco Baseball Associates, LLC. Some good baseball fans here tonight. It's a 4-3 lead for the Pirates. Jung Ho Kung is going to lead things off. And he takes a strike and it's 0 and 1. Oh and two. Oh and three. And that's the first time you've seen it. Well, tomorrow it's the Giants and the Pirates at Say Hey Tuesday from Willie Mays Plaza. Yahoo Sports Talk live at 5, pregame live at 6.30. Here's Stewart. Stewart is two for three. Two doubles. That'd be a good place to sit behind. Jose Tabata is on deck. Do look at that though. Down the left field line. Aoki on the move. And Stewart's going to have his third double. So Stewart slides in as the ball squirts by Panic. With Romo running down to the bullpen. Tabata on the year is hitting 250. He's 3 for 12. All his hits have come as a pinch hitter. And he drives this one out to Pagan, who's going to make the catch. Stewart tagging, he'll go to third. And that'll bring up Josh Harrison. Harrison. Is 0 for 2. He's walked. He was hit by a pitch. Mark Lance the closer. Get ready for the ninth. Get on the ground to. Panic, and that's going to end the inning. So the Giants will go to the bottom of the ninth, looking to score one, maybe two. It's four, three, Pirates.
Brought to you by Honda. And we're thinking that Garrett Cole's that guy. Why? Well, all he did is go seven strong innings, five hits allowed, two runs. None of them are unearned. None of them are earned. Two walks, nine strikeouts. Oh, and by the way, he also scored two runs. So he's our player of the game, and it's brought to you by Honda. When it's time for a change, thanks Speedy Oil Change and Auto Service, your oil change tune up and smog experts. Mark Melanson, the new pitcher now for the Pirates, 24th time he's come in. He's got 13 saves and 14 opportunities this year, no record of wins. He has one loss, 2.74 ERA. And you're going to see a lot of cutters. And uh, it, it's 90 ish cut with a big curveball. Pretty much two looks. Go get him. Jordy Mercer is now at short. Here's Belt. And Belt takes wide. One ball and no strikes. Belt, Crawford, Pagan, three left handed hitters, and then Duffy and a pinch hitter. All going to hit here in the ninth. Two balls, no strikes. Comes in with a strike. It's two and one. Yeah, I think it. Uh, Bell thought that was a bit high. Lance has given up two home runs on the year. So back to back cutters, one outside corner, one inside corner, and Lance evens up the count. That's the look of concern right there. So belt started out two and zero. Oh, it's now two and two. On the ground foul as that took his bat. Don't forget to check out Sportsnet Central tonight after Giants post game live right here in Comcast Sportsnet Bay Area. New bat for Belt. As he gets some sticking from Brandon Crawford. The Brandon's trying to do something here in the ninth. On the ground, right back to Melanson. One out. So a nice comeback there from Melanson down the count 2 0. Solid numbers of how the lefties and the righties are hitting. He gets lefties out better than he does righties. So here's Crawford. Crawford's 0 for 3. Cut's going to run flat right into a lefty. Crawford attacking that pitch that was up and it's 0 and 1. Well, the thing about a cut, too, that's so unique is this the, the, the one pitch that you're taught to throw high. If you're a right handed pitcher, you want to get lefties out, you want to try and throw the thing flat right at their belt. Only two. Got away from Stewart. So Crawford is out swinging. And that'll bring up Angel Pagan.
Last hope for the Giants. As Pagan steps in. Pagan is 0 for 3 with a couple of strikeouts. Out of play down the left field line. Pagan's catch in the third inning is the highlight of the night defensively, and that came with the bases loaded. This is one of one out. A hard luck sacrifice fly for McCutcheon. Here it's inside. It almost hit Pagan. Pagan on the ground, and this should do it. And that's the ball game. So, game one of this three game series goes to the Pirates. And Garrett Cole out pitches Ryan Vogelsong. Three runs in the fifth inning, the difference in this game. Well, Cole came as advertised, had great stuff. And we talked about 90 foot mistakes was going to be the difference in this ball game, and it was a hit batsman and a walk. That led to that big three run inning that the Pirates had, and uh, those were 90 foot mistakes, and it cost the Giants tonight. Also, an error by Matt Duffy that uh, helped plate a run for the Pirates in the third inning. So, Giants will try to get back on track tomorrow night. Final score here tonight Pirates four, Giants three. Thanks for joining us. Stay tuned. Eastern's Giants post game live interviews of the wrap coming up.